speaking of poetry, uh, last week we talked about Eva Marie's amazing performance at her first ever <laughs> televised WWE match because she actually did have a, a match previously at SummerSlam Access, but that doesn't really count for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a report that allegedly states that it was made on purpose for her to wrestle because WWE sort of wanted to teach her a lesson or whatever. We've kept hearing multiple reports, kept reading multiple reports about her personality, about people hating her backstage. She seems like this whole ball of negativity <laughs> or something to a, to a supreme level. I, I thought that was really interesting how they do that. I mean... You were talking about last week that just putting her on that match, I mean, potentially it doesn't kill wrestling, but anybody that sort of wonders why they watch wrestling, you look at that and it's like, what was the point of that? You know, that, that mm-hmm. ruins the image. It's like it's like a movie and then all of a sudden you see one of the one of the characters read the script. It's like you just <laughs> showed me the script, man. Yeah. I'm out of the movie. You gotta put me back in. Good example. And that was it. It was an entire match of the script just being right in your face. So did WWE do something right by apparently teaching her a lesson in that process? Or should it, should they have done that in NXT or something? Yeah, I was thinking that actually, that maybe they could have just put her on an NXT. But I think they wanted to make a statement. And it's it's a questionable decision, in my opinion. Because obviously her going out there and having the match, it's not on Eva Marie. Regardless of what she did backstage, that's WWE's fault for putting her out there. Like the best way, like I, I have a stupid ass example, but you're you're hurting your product by doing this. Like you said, it's like she's reading the script. I, I had some example like, okay, let's say, you know, you, you're a manufacturer, you make chairs or something like that. And you hire this new guy who thinks he's hot shit and you know he can't, he can't, you know, do the job that everybody else is doing. But you take the chair that he made, even though you know he can't do it great, and you put it out on the shelf or you send it to the store and somebody buys it, they sit on it and it breaks. You are hurting your product and your brand image you know, to the public. I know it's a stupid example, but it's it's an interesting way to look at it. You know what I mean? It's like, a very elaborate example. Yes. <laughs> Why couldn't it have been a table? Oh, that's true. Well, chairs are a very important weapon in wrestling, okay? <laughs> true. So, yeah. Also are tables. Yeah, that is true. But chairs are the, the quintessential weapon, I guess. As long as they're not to the head. Yes. Because it leads to very bad things, oh, yeah. as seen previously. <laughs> so, anyway, they... To make a political backstage statement, they actually hurt their product. They made everybody else have to sit through that just so they could send a message to one person. You have a live TV show that millions of people watch every week, and you're willing to sort of toy with that just to prove a point to somebody. I think that is what's ridiculous about it. And I know wrestling does this all the time. You know, if they're pissed at somebody, they go out and job in a match. JTG talks crap on Twitter. Ryback goes out, squashes him. But at least JTG is fully trained professional that, you know, is not going to kill the look of your product. So that's why I think it was irresponsible of WWE to do that. Find another way. To prove a point. And the most important thing is like, okay, say hypothetically the point was proven. She's like, hey, you know, I get it. What then? You still had that match on air. You still Mm -hmm. had that moment that, yeah, maybe a lot of people tuned away. Maybe they realized, you know what, not not a lot of people pay attention to the Divas matches. But at the same time, it's like people already have this negative image of the Divas when it comes to the wrestling. I mean, they're referred to as the piss break. They're referred to as a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. And then you throw Eva Marie in there? I mean, like Keith said last week, and I hope this date is going well and all that, (laughs) but, uh, you know, it, it completely justified AJ Lee's pipe bomb whether it was a work or not, it's like, what? what is the point of doing that? You know, it's what is the point of guys like when uh, I remember one time, I think it was uh, Kofi Kingston versus Randy Orton where they were sort of feuding. I don't know mm-hmm. if you remember that, that Kofi like botched a spot. Yeah. That Randy was like going to go for a punt, but then uh, Kofi started going up. So then Randy, 
knocks him down, I think it was with the RKO, and started calling him stupid, I just stupid. recently watched that, actually. Oh, really? But Well, that, you know, it's like, okay, I get it, you know, wrestling is known for sort of having egos, larger-than-life characters, outside of the characters themselves, but the people, but it damages the product. And as, as, a, as a fan, as a member of the WWE Universe, or whatever the hell... They shouldn't keep doing that. I think it damages their product. And hey, if you have NXT, if you have all these things, I get it. Total Divas is coming back. So that was probably 100% for that show for the new season. Because there's like 20 things you can talk about there. I mean, if they did the Fundango thing with her, this is not, that's nothing compared to this. I mean, this is a live wrestling match on Raw. Not SmackDown, not main event, not superstars, but on Raw, the three-hour show. And they put her in that. 